see, but you see she's already been. Yeah, she's like, she's had extensive, extensive previous treatments. Uh, what, do you think, what do you think about this uh, antenna corrupted after the neck? Uh, it's very tortuous and it's You know. Yeah, it's it looks like quite it's quite lateralized. But yeah, not, not quite a hypertensive type uh, mm -hmm. change. It has a little of an apparent course. Then there's, a <clears throat> there's something here already. <clears throat> okay. Mm -hmm. but, Rick, what is this one? That's the median artery. Uh, mm, no, actually, median no, would be low down. Yeah, yeah, it's redundant. Where, where are we here? What segment of the carotid artery? It's cavernous. So the cavernous. Yeah. What branches are you going to have going inferiorly and laterally? The <laughs> lateral trunk. Yeah. Okay. But this is very peculiar because it's going all the way, and we have to figure out what this artery is. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, what do you think it could be, and how do we rationalize it? Well, we know it goes beyond the region of the mouth, so it's must be uh, buccal. Yes, absolutely. You don't have any arteries in the middle of your of your mouth. They have to, have to be here. Mm -hmm. It's the only place that this artery can be. So that already tells you another important thing. If I keep on going, we will see, or chances are, if this would be a continuous injection, what artery would this be anastomosing? The buccal anastomosis, what with what? Uh, with branches of the facial stuff. The facial and maxillary system, right? They can have either deep connections or superficial connections. Mm -hmm. So yes, if you would continue, probably would tell you there's something going on with the facial and artery. Mm -hmm. Now, the other peculiar thing here is, what is this one? It looks like the ophthalmic artery. It actually, it's, I hate the word it looks like. It is the ophthalmic it artery. It is the ophthalmic, but it's something strange already about it, right? Yeah, it's truncated. Truncated. Okay, so, and knowing the little we know about this patient, maybe after they remove her eye. Mm. Okay? So, I mean, the no, no, what's missing here? There's no crotal blush. The, 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 probably the globe mm. itself is missing, yeah. right? And this is a, a moidal collateral that may come into, the edge is not the greatest. So already you know this girl had some kind of a anomaly early in development because this is not the normal course of the antenna carotid artery. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes you see, not quite like that, but this kind of thing with hypertensive people, but it goes in, a, in the same track. Mm -hmm. So if we were to have the original firm, here we can see the, in, the external, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, and obviously this one is which one? Special. The special, and this one? Uh, it's ascending peloton. No, 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 come on, you're doing too good. Don't. Remember that, that there's no rules and regulations. This is this, I mean, you may have a duplication of a certain artery. If I tell you, we, we analyzed this one, it went through and there's no arteries in the mouth. This one is going also connecting here to here. So it's another buccal type branch. Right, okay, yeah. yeah. You know, this, this is probably, normally people don't have that because of the the, the stress that this AVM here is causing has made this, this probably is the original buckle actually. Right, okay, yeah. Right? What is this one? Uh, it's inferior alveolar. Correct. Why do you know? The answer is yes, why? Uh, because it's following a straight course. A straight, straight course, because where does it travel? Intraosseously. In the bone, right? Whereas this one is in the soft tissues. So there's another way that helps us. Middle meningeal artery is going to be it's going to be a straight artery because it's also kind of in the bone, right? Mm -hmm. Superficial temple is going to be a weakly one because it's soft, soft, right? I mean, you see how we're applying those same. I mean, you can't figure out everything. This patient has been so altered, mm -hmm. you know that that uh, we don't have anything normal. You can see this stupid here, the coils. Okay, so this, which probably is the internal maxilla, right? Mm -hmm. But we. It couldn't go through the right way, so it's finding another way to kind of bypass. I can't give you a name in it. I don't know what this one is. That could be problems, be 
I mean, all we know is that this is entering the bone mm. for this sharp curve, right? Just yeah. like foramen spinosum. But it's not quite the foramen spinosum. It does come here. There is, I can't tell you if it's this one, but I think it's this one, right? So we could help ourselves with the AP. So she had said a lot of a lot of anatomical rapes. And I think that this one is the is, is this one, but I'm not sure. Okay, so let's see what else we can do with this one. Yep, obviously there is a. Also, this malformation tells you that they probably did chop a piece here. That's because I mean AVM is very unlikely to have such a multifocal. So most likely this is the result of some type of a surgical mm -hmm. intervention. There's something here too, huh? Yeah, what is that? It's mm. a scalp, you know, some this AVM says sometimes it's the, almost the whole face. This is this part. See there's... there's yeah, right. there's shunting, proper right. shunting there. Right. And there's, this is, but this is all angiogenesis, this is all collateral circulation. Again, there's another vein here, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is a pretty. Is that the anterior thalcine artery. Here, yes, well? but it's. But the question is, how is it feeling? How is it feeling? Yes, the answer is correct. It probably is feeling here like this. Cool. And come down. Let's see. If we see it here in the late phase. I have to see. I don't know if this is. Let me close this for a moment. It is a meningeal vessel that reconstitutes, right? Mm -hmm. This is meningeal. Same. Same principle, right? Straight artery. Mm -hmm. So this is a meningeal artery. It's reconstituting right in the midline. But it doesn't go anywhere. Where does the false scene, how does the middle meningeal artery and the false scene artery anastomose? I mean, how the false scene artery comes usually from what? Originate from where? The anterior ethmoidal. Okay, from the ophthalmic system. Mm -hmm. And here may be affected because of the removal of the eye. Huh. You can see there was something, something happened. All this collateral was trying to bypass the occlusion. This is an outside study. Let's see what else we can do with it. This we saw. We saw this one. All right. Maybe there is a little bit here, false in. Yeah. Maybe. Okay, now we see here the interesting is going to be the AP on the left side. See what it's doing. Just know that this one is too big, right? Yeah. That tells you it's going to go all around. Yeah, the edge is not great, so this makes it more difficult. Okay. Let's see what this one is. The This is the bad eye. You want to go to yesterday's? I know you'll get there. Okay. okay, so here you have wow. this is the ophthalmic, right? Wow. Yeah. yeah. Now, is there, is there a stenosis here? There's coils in the way. Right. Okay, good, good. But look at the look at the wow. amount of. That's crazy. How would you how would you attack this? You have to embolize this pre-op, or you have to, you know, she's bleeding, or how would you attack? How would you address? She's blind on the right eye. Blind on the right, and this is her only eye on the left. This is the only eye yeah. on the left. So I mean, transarterially is going to be risky because if you risk, it's possible, definitely possible. Yeah. But risky. But direct puncture will probably direct be puncture. the safest. Now the key in a direct puncture to to this is is when you inject the liquid embolic, you don't reflux into the ophthalmic. Uh -huh. Although here it, it would be kind of a very monstrous to do that. I mean, you have to really make a because there's so much blood flow and so on. Mm. But uh, but it should be now. You see also collateral. This this has to be outside the orbit. I can tell you for sure. Yeah. Probably this. I don't know. The septal branch. Yeah. Oh, can't be it's septal. a really really after anatomy. We have another cute little thing here. It okay. looks like. Huh? It looks like it's following the course of ascending pharyngeal. Yes. Yes. Mm. And that should make us suspicious. Here it is too. So that should make it suspicious. Could have an origin right at the bifurcation. Mm -hmm. So let's see. We have this is the left side. 
So this is, yep, yeah, there it is. There she is. Okay, there's the Oh, yeah. Yeah. So you see, always looking at the edge of the film. You know, this, this you'll always, uh, you're not going to forget that ophthalmic. But that's the, it's a good gestalt of, uh, you're a neurologist originally, and you're mm -hmm. a neurosurgeon. Yeah, that's, right. a, that's a thing that the radiology, <laughs> No, no. No, he's no. radiologist. Radiology. Oh, you're that's talking. why I left. <laughs> okay, so, but, but, you know, that's one of the principles of chest x-ray. Yeah. That you're never going to forget to look at the lungs, but you always forget the, the met and the bone or things like that, okay? So let's see what else we can do here. We've seen this. Something interesting here, but... Here. This yeah. is a, this anastomosis at the septum, right? Here's the septum. Mm -hmm. And you don't have arteries in the middle of the nose, so it has to go through the bone to be able to get to the other side, okay? Uh -huh. Okay, so let's just put a catheter and see what's right there. Beautiful. Schnazogram. And you see the turbinates here? Mm -hmm. You see it very nicely. And what about this one? What is this one? Nothing to worry. That can go into the into the ophthalmic. Yeah, it looks like there's wash out of. Yeah, you have to be careful about that. I'm not seeing it in the AP. What's this one? Can you tell me what did you see here? Spina palatine. Yes. Injection. You see yeah, the separate branches. It's a little bit of the infraorbital, right? Yeah. But this is the the uh, terminates again. See. Mm. Okay. This is also not a collateral. Going to the same lesion. So you would get this lesion. Again, direct puncture would be the best way to. Uh, mm. Let's see. We see something in the. This one? That's the odontoid arcade. Yes. Right here. C3 and odontoid. <laughs> I'm trying to see who this one is. And then you see here the anastomosis between the dorsal cervical mm -hmm. and the vertebrae. Mm -hmm. right? What was yesterday? September 8th, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, September 8th. So we have correct to start with the contralateral side. And the reason for that is that you tend to forget. So this is the left side, the eye that was removed was on the right, correct? Mm -hmm. Correct. <coughs> Look, there is a change in the uh, ophthalmic here. Mm -hmm. It's less, so this has been removed something has been done but now they're still coming into the midline I would have done a shot of the internal and then check that okay you may be able to get some of this also from the what's this one that's the uh, inferior ventral inferior society okay do you know what this is it's that a cavernous Lukewarm, cavernous is here. SPS, superior. It's, it's the ophthalmic. Oh, that's ophthalmic. Okay, superior so ophthalmic. How many ophthalmic veins do we have in each eye? Ophthalmic vein. One. One, and it divides into superior and inferior division. Mm -hmm. But many people say the superior ophthalmic vein and inferior ophthalmic vein. That's not correct. Oh, I see. Okay. There's a common ophthalmic vein. That's important because that's where you plug it. It's the superior division, inferior division. Look at this. There's the cavernous sinus, okay? Mm. Coming down. Here's the, and then this is the facial vein. Which, by the way, they might have 
ligated here something too. Mm. And there's your cavern of silence, right? Do you know what this is and what this is? The anterior vitreous sinuses. Do we have two? Yeah, right? Two on each, one on each one side. One on each side. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's okay. <laughs> Not a tricky question. It's just, <laughs> okay, so you see two, you, and then sometimes you can tell which one is which if you can, if you're able to see the external auditory meatus, mm -hmm. okay? And then you can see, then you look at your P, you see the hair a little bit twisted. And you yeah. could, time, but that's not, not, not easy to find which side it is. I mean, you could sign in, in this one by the way it feels or by the size, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, there it is, cool, okay, I'm not gonna get this, okay, that's the internal, okay, then we have, here is the, So this is the same, actually mm -hmm. the same as we saw before, right? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> oh, sorry. So I think if you know, okay. Okay, so here we have the same thing, the same inferior delta. We went over this thing. This is a little masseteric cartridge goes to the muscle. Mm -hmm. so this is the buckle. This is now the facial that is being distorted. And there is some vascularization, vascular malformation in there. This is not, no, this is too, I took the wrong, list. I said I've seen this before. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. This one is the one we've seen, right? Yeah. Okay, so let's see this one. Okay. Okay, so this is the right side. Okay, this is an interesting one. This is the is one you were saying before. Is that the pharyngeal component of the ascending pharyngeal? No, this is this this I think is a pterygovaginal. Oh, pterygovaginal. Yeah. Okay, yeah. And then there is a here's a little bit of the ILT, which is also not it's mm -hmm. like acting as a incredible collateral. And then this one, no, this which one is this one? Uh -huh. Alright. Very good. And this is masseteric artery. This is an astomosis of one masseteric to another one. We're gonna see it land on the here. There it is. Okay? Uh -huh. So this is this one. I mean, the vascular system is incredible, because right? it, mm -hmm. <laughs> it puts up with doctors and everybody. <laughs> okay, you can look at this thing here. This, this is probably this area. Mm -hmm. Okay? And then this is all to the muscle. Then this is the AVM that we were treating, right? Mm -hmm. And then this is, what would you say this is? Yeah. You don't know, say I don't know. There's yeah, no, I don't know. Okay. Looks like recolorization of the infraorbital. Inf it's a collar. It's, there's no real arteries. This the infraorbital goes in this, so you know, some here has to go towards bone. Yeah. So the that has been embolized or raped or whatever they did to poor thing, and then this is collateral trying to bypass that because the AVM is demanding, is requesting. Mm -hmm. This is deeper inside, okay, from the sphenopalatine, right? This is the one that you embolize when you're doing epistaxis. Mm. Okay, so we see all this. This is from the infralateral trunk coming, kind of. What would you say, Greg? How does this infralateral trunk gets to here? Uh, is that through? Is that through Vidian then? No, it's too high. No, it could be. I mean, this could be rotundum, rotundum right? Yeah. Over here, so this could be through foramen ovale. I okay. mean, I, I can't tell yeah, you for yeah, sure. Yeah. And then we see the stamp of the ophthalmic again, uh -huh. right? Yeah. Okay, back here we have, do you know what this one is? Uh, looks like posterior auricular. Posterior auricular, yeah, this is important because this may supply the facial nerve, mm -hmm. okay? This is probably part of the posterior branch of ascending pharyngeal. Mm -hmm. Okay, and 
then you have the trans master here going into boldness. Okay, let's see what we have here. Okay, so it's more. Like, this is more selective, right? Young lady, what is this one? Um, that is. Is that the lingua? Yes. Yes. Very good. Okay. <coughs> Sometimes there is a common trunk called pharyngo, uh, the facial and the lingual artery. This is peculiar because we have even this one, which is this one. Could what be. Is that the posterior auricular? No. This is more the occipital. Occipital, okay. Okay. So we need to see it a little bit better. Where am I? I am here. So this should be the AP. So it's actually not a common trunk. Here's the common trunk, here's the origin of one, mm -hmm. here's this continuation of the other one, and here's the facial, right? And again, we have the buccal, the anastomosis with the maxillary arteries. Mm -hmm. Okay, then this is the little nidus ABM, right? Look, this is the draining vein, facial vein. Mm -hmm. And again, you can see that probably there has been surgery because these two little pieces remanent. So the, okay, so the question was how to treat it. We have preparing it for surgery. There is an operation that, uh, that we developed with Dr. Weiner uh, maybe 15 years ago. We got these horrible patients, you know, I got always, well, nobody wanted the patient, you know, they have with horrible AVM all over the place. And AVM surgery has always been said that, you know, because it's so bloody, you get into it and you gotta go and do a massive resection and all that. <laughs> and I said, hey Milton, what if I just embolize you a little piece? Just, I'm gonna dry you. It doesn't matter if you get necrosis or not. I'm just gonna dry you a piece. You remove that piece. We let things settle down, you know, and then we bring back the patient and we start treating patients like that. And we've got horrible ABMs like that. Mm. You're not curing them, but you improve their life incredibly. So that's the, that's a, and now we do a lot of it. So he's just, he's just removing this portion, mm -hmm. okay? And that's where we learned that, you know, sometimes very hard. In this particular case, I suggested to, to Tomoyoshi to go with particles. And the reason for it is because I have a network, right? Mm -hmm. There is, well, it's, 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 it's like micro fissures, smaller fistulas. And that's what we, that's what we started with. We could have gone directly to the to, to DP, but I thought that this would do very good. And here is the, I mean, this is room three, which is, and here's where he's doing the, the injection. And the idea is to inject enough to reflux, to see what happens if you reflux, right? When you're doing this preliminary prior to, and then we can see that definitely we don't want to get this one, because there may be some healing problems, but that's what, what helped uh, a lot. So I'm gonna put this one here. So what particles would you choose to inject here? This is it says we are knocking it out. Uh, probably, I mean, if the intent is operative resection, all you're aiming to do is ligationally embolize the lesion. Not quite. Because ligation here would be actually, it's gonna take it from above. Remember uh -huh. that that picture we had here? Yeah. See, it would, if stop you stop just stop. ligate here, this thing is gonna come and resupply it. Mm. You actually may make th uh, things a little bit worse. You know what I decided to do is first use very small particles, 100 microns. Okay. Hey guys. Okay, good morning. Oh, come on. First, use 100 microns to see, and once you see them, 100 microns would not, well, we would go to the next level, the next level, and we got quite good. You see already here, you see already the change, and here is the collateral circulation, which is preserved, uh -huh. okay? So to take care of that collateral circulation, that's when we went ahead and did the uh, DP. I think this is a bolus injection. So we didn't sacrifice that much normal tissue. Mm -hmm. Maybe one more. What 
be aiming for yeah. with the direct puncture, Dr. V? Sorry? What what point were you aiming for when you did the direct puncture? What we do we did ultrasound first. Uh-huh. We had an agreement with uh, with the plastic surgeon with the uh, Wayner, which area, you know, we he sends me a picture uh -huh. that we paint exactly what he's gonna resect, and that's the area that we drag. Right. Okay. Yeah. But you're aiming just basically for the nidus and then just, just getting getting this thing blood out of the needle. Right. The usual approach. We want to preserve this because this this anatomy has been so this so altered mm. that if we do too aggressive liquid embolic or you actually got yes, he's gonna take it, but he's gonna have problems in healing. Mm, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? So you know, we got. I mean, from this to this, mm -hmm. you know, but you can see that we did penetrate because you see the arcade of the whole thing. This, this one didn't go away. This one didn't go away. That was there, right? Mm -hmm. Can I ask a general question about? facial AVMs, do people use alcohol much to treat these elsewhere? Uh, they are, uh, alcohol is actually quite effective, but it's very aggressive. Yeah. Uh -huh. Okay, uh, but uh, he, he popularized very much the alcohol. Now the first person that ever reported alcohol being used in, in the basket was me. Yeah. But in venous malformation, not in AVMs. Uh -huh. yeah. It was a paper rejected and actually was uh, a comment in plastic and reconstructive surgery. Uh, radiology journals just wouldn't think, but that's, uh, I got used to those things. And in any event, uh, but alcohol, you have to be very precise, very good position. It is quite what, because what alcohol does is not only a mechanical occlusion, but it does a, a, a necrosis. It does a, a biological damage mm -hmm. to the endothelium and so on. But it's the ones that, I mean, there, there have been horrible things, you know, uh, necrosis and so, uh, and then uh, my second question is, like, say for this one, if you have a single outflow vein from something yeah, it like would this, be yes. it would be. Uh, as a matter of fact, look at what happened to the vein here. It got stagnant and got smaller. Yeah, but can trans if you go go transvenous and against the flow and like pressure cooker and push back. The the pro the answer is probably yes. The reason we're not doing is because these people have. Because if you do that, I'm going to have a plastic ball. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? So because it's it's a different disease, it's a different condition. The brain, in the meantime, you don't make mass effect that's compressing on anything. Doesn't matter, mm. right? Mm. But in here, if you do that, you're going to swell it up, and yeah. and then they come here because of that. What I have pretty good results is taking this, doing DP, and doing a uh, surge flow with leomycin. Yeah, yeah. That paper should be written. I mean, I have maybe 20, 30 cases. Yeah. You know, that's a, that's a, that's a, the results are quite well. And now, by now, it's probably four years yeah. that we can get patients, get the follow up, and see how they're doing. Yeah. 